All right. Good morning, everybody. God bless all of you. Good to see you today. We've got a good crowd. It's spring. <laughs> yeah, you said that last week. I well, guess. look at it. It is. It's looking good. Sky is blue. It's uh, sunny. It's warm out there. Yeah. I think it's spring. Yeah, folks, We'll be mowing the yard and. Folks starting to come back from the south and coming back home. and What's that? What, what? Well, people been in Florida and all that. We're starting to drift in. Yeah. Yeah, coming back home. home, huh? Yeah, I see. I know. See Snowbirds. Barb and Marge back there. Now, you know, you know they've been down south. And well, they have been. It's yeah. good to see them back there. They slipped yeah. in. I didn't yeah. see them. Yeah, yeah, good to see them. I'm glad they're here. Yeah. Amen. They hang out down there, don't they? That's right. Yep. Yeah. So... Hey, we got a couple new ones uh, today. All right. There's Oakley back there. Oakley is there with Elijah and Chrissy. Brand new Oakley. All right. He's a good looking boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, they say he looks like Elijah, but he'll grow out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then Penelope is here. She's brand new today. Yeah. She's sitting right back there. Yeah, wave yeah. your hand. All right, good deal. So I don't know if there's yeah. others that are brand new. That's I, good. I didn't get to everybody today. <sighs> yeah, boy, that's been good to see everybody. Had a good week, I guess. Yes. Been busy. Been a good that. week. The Lord is so good. I saw Cody. They had the district tournament here last week. I know he's been busy. And yeah, he has Girls, been. Uh, I guess they'll continue to play, the local Menifee County girls. They, they play, play tomorrow next. night. They're the first game of the region. All right, so yeah. support them. Yeah, go Would Lady you, yeah. Cats or right. whatever. It's good. Yeah. And all your local schools, that'd be great. But, yeah. Yeah. Been a short week for me last week was. And I didn't I didn't go into work Friday. I had an eye problem. So you I had an work. eye problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what yeah, happened? I, I just couldn't see myself working. <laughs> day, yeah. So, anyway. I, that day, uh, yeah, boy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, actually, my memories. My memory's getting bad. You know, John and them, they, every time I leave the house, I'll forget something. Their dads, and they'll have to yell at me. Memory's getting bad. So that actually caused me to lose my job. Yeah? Well, yeah, what yeah. happened? I'm still employed. I just don't know where. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'll you've got that. some yeah. pretty big issues yeah. that we're dealing with. Yeah. Well, anyway, good to see everybody out. And you know, we better, numbers. before we go too far, we better mention, because there's a family back there, give, uh, they're looking at me pretty hard. We better mention the Bath County Wildcats. They're also in the region that's right. this year, too. Yeah, that's what I say. Hey, we yeah. got several. Yeah. yeah. I just I wanted to Montgomery, throw that out there, too, to keep right. myself out of I trouble. I think Montgomery County girls are in it. Are they? I okay, there you as go. As well. Yeah. So, yeah, we actually so want our, to support our local schools. Our folks sure. represent a lot of people, don't they? Yeah. And Morgan, yeah. I don't know if Morgan County, I don't know, man. They are. are. Morgan's they? in. Okay, good deal. Morgan <laughs> girls, I believe. Yeah. All right. So, Man, what a crowd. We're almost full. It's really a good crowd. You know what next week is. Yeah. We're going back to the sanctuary. Back in the sanctuary. All right. The number one issue, the most asked question in all of that is about the coffee. What are we going to do about the coffee? Well, I think we've got to have some. Out there in the lobby or yeah, something? We're going to work it out somehow, probably. Uh, it's, it's become something spiritual now. <laughs> you know, it was just get a cup of coffee before you leave the house. And now it's like. I can't go to I can't go through the service without some coffee. <laughs> yeah. That's right, especially toward the end. <laughs> now, what's that supposed to mean? I, I just, well, you know, I just said that. Yeah, you just had to throw that out there, didn't you? <laughs> no respect, buddy. I'm telling you, no respect. <laughs> what? what a, anyway, but. Uh, Oh, yeah, that choir, hey, choir practice tonight. Come in five. We haven't had a choir for, what, two years? So we're going to we, get that going. So come we out tonight. We were outside around. for, what, three uh, or four months out in our cars in, when this first started. That and was then 2020. In right. July of 20, we moved in here. God gave us this special place, and it's been incredible for all of this yeah, time. Right. Yeah. And we so. praise the Lord for this good place. And... Uh, but now we're headed, as we say, to a better place. That's right. Amen. 
All right. Good Amen. deal. Well, what's our message on today? Last week's on temptation. Uh, today is uh, this is us. A picture of us. This a is A picture us. of believers. This All is right. us. Yeah. Yep. Used for a story of, of Jesus and his disciples. Boy, we know we're crap like Brent and Karen are sitting all the way over there. There he is, generally yeah. over here. So we know we got a good crowd when everybody has to move different locations. I know I, it I like is. It when you don't get to sit in your normal place, that means I gotta, you got a good I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I'm just a little bit nervous about going over there and where people are going to sit. We're used to just sitting wherever we come in. And I'm oh. afraid they're going to go over there and, and there's get somebody There's only seat. one I'm concerned about. That's Carol. Once, that's I know, Carol's. I know. Do not know. get Carol's seat, Just all right, folks? Please don't put me in that situation uh, next week. All yeah, right. just. Well, we uh, better have church. We all better right. have church. All we right. need it after we that. We need church, all right. Yeah. Let's we stand and sing. All right, oh, God bless you all. Oh, four thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. Are you glad to be in God's house today? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. Father, we praise you. We praise you for being so great, being so good. We praise you, Father, for the Lord Jesus. Thank you for sending him. Thank you that he came to be our Savior, what we needed more than anything else. Thank you that you put all your sins upon him to die in our place for our sins. And we're thankful for forgiveness. We're thankful for unconditional love. We're thankful for heaven. We're thankful that even in the chaos of our world, we can be confident. We can be comforted. We can be encouraged because our Savior is in control of all things. And we're going to heaven. Father, I just pray you'd bless us today as we worship. We want to please you. We want to bring you glory. We want to point people toward you. We want to lift up the name of Jesus. We want to give the gospel clearly. If there's anyone here today who's not saved, Father, we pray that today they would be saved. And Father, we pray for all the needs of people. We have so many needs. Uh, there are people who are sick and facing surgery and uh, waiting for, for results of tests. And, and there's people who are discouraged. There's people who are going through storms in their lives there's all kinds of things going on we're thankful the lord jesus gave us the invitation of come to him he would give us rest i just pray father you'd please equip us today there's a world that needs to hear about jesus and i pray you'd give us courage give us boldness and help us to go out and make a difference with the good news of jesus and what he can do for them Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be together in worship, and we just pray you'll be pleased. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. May we see this as we continue singing. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Well, it's good to see this great crowd this morning. When upon life fills you are ten. Discourage thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them. The load of care. The 
great God. Glory, glory, glory. And uh, so glad to be here. Oh, here. Lord. Go ahead, Rick. My God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. And when I think that God is Son not sparing, send Him to die, I scarce can take. Oh, 
was bought on Calvary by the Father's only Son. And he has my mansion ready when my work is done. God made a way made for me. me. Beyond on that crystal sea, he's coming back coming someday. Back someday. Gonna take me home to stay. I'll live forever. Over on that on golden shore, what a wonderful, what happy a wonderful day. God day. made no way. God made a way. Soon my mansion will be ready. I'll be going home. Never more to be discouraged. Never more to roam. And on some happy morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and I go to. God made a way, made a way for me. Be on the on crystal, that crystal sea. He's coming back, coming someday. back someday. Gonna take me home to stay. I'll live forever. Forevermore. Over on that on golden that shore. Golden shore. What a wonderful what happy a wonderful day. God day. made a way. God made a way. God made singer will be 92 this Wednesday and uh, he's about to get the hang of it I think finally amen uh, let me just mention a few things today our special offering is for WLJC we really need your help with that and I know you watched it uh, Thursday night when the guys were up there and and it's a great ministry, and we, we hear so many comments about, uh, about the ministry there, and, and uh, we, we could just use some help with the support of WLJC. Um, the teachers, Sunday school teachers, we're starting Sunday school next, next Sunday as we go back into the sanctuary. Uh, we've had Jim's been going uh, with his adult class all along. Uh, but the rest of us will start 9.45 next Sunday morning. No opening, just go right into your Sunday school class. If you don't know where your class is, just ask, we'll get you there. Uh, mine with the, the class that we've, we've had there for several years will continue to meet here in the, in the gym. But 9.45 and... Um, Hope to see you all there. Teachers, right after the service today, if you would just stay for a few minutes and John will go over just two or three things that we just want to double check on before we get started uh, next, uh, next Sunday morning, 945. And then, of course, our service tonight, we're going to continue our, uh, our series on end time awareness. And uh, boy, there are a lot of things going on right now. As we can see it all unfold uh, right before our eyes, surely the Lord Jesus will be back soon. Tonight at 6 o'clock, prayer meeting and, uh, and Bible study and youth on Wednesday nights in the adult class. Brother Allen is teaching uh, through 1 John, and I encourage you to come, uh, to come for that. 
And then, uh, of course, next week I mentioned we're going over to church for our services, our worship services. I'm thankful for the, what this gym has meant to us during this time. It's been an incredible blessing, uh, but still looking forward to going to, uh, uh, to the uh, sanctuary. And then um, remember March 13, in uh, two weeks, we spring forward one hour. Spring forward one hour on March 13. All right. All right, just before the message. Please turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Very familiar story, but always some good lessons in God's Word. Wherever you, wherever you choose, wherever you read, wherever you study, you will find God speaking to you, to your head, to your heart, and has lessons for you. In verse 35 it says, And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, unto his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us cross over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him, even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. 
And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full, or it was, it was filling up. The, the ship was in danger of uh, being filled with water. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and saith unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its truth. We thank you that it is living and powerful. And Father, as we study together, I pray that every word spoken is yours and not mine. And I pray that your will is done in our lives and in our church. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, study this passage, there are some things about us that I want us to see in uh, in this story of Jesus and his disciples as they, as they get out on the sea and a storm comes up and then as they are, they're afraid and, and, and Jesus takes care of them, of course, so they can continue on to the other side where he told them that's where they were going to go. But first of all, I want us to look at Jesus. He's always the hero of the story. He was the hero of this story. He's the hero of every story. The Lord Jesus is the hero of the Bible. He's a hero of our lives. The Bible is about the Lord Jesus from beginning to end. Because even in the beginning, it's in, in, in the first verse, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says that all things were made by him, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there was not anything made that was made without him. He has created all things, says in Colossians 1. By him were all things created, that they were created for him. And he sustains all things. The Lord Jesus is a hero of creation. He is a hero of salvation. He is a hero of our sanctification. He's a hero of our justification. He's a hero of our glorification. He is a hero of everything about us. The Lord Jesus is our hero. Now, if there's someone you want to look up to, and there's all kinds of people that are out there in front of us, sports people, uh, uh, actors and actresses, and all of these kinds of people, But if you want a real hero that will always present things the way they ought to be and who will always take care of you and be there for you and who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, your hero ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And parents, you ought to present the Lord Jesus as a hero, as the one they need to know personally and to look up to always the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want us to look at him in this, in this uh, uh, story because we not only uh, see a couple things about him, but we see good theology even in this story. Because first of all, uh, as we look at Jesus, we see his humanity. We see his humanity. You know that the Lord Jesus came in the flesh. And Jesus was... Uh, th- this, is, this is something we understand by faith. But the Lord Jesus was 100% human, but he is also 100% God. That's why we call him the God-man. And we see, that, and Philippians says that he, he came in the form of a servant. And, 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 as, and he is fashioned as a man. He put on flesh. And then he, he, he humbled himself and died on the cross for our sins. But it's important for us to understand the humanity of Jesus. And here we see this when it says that he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. 
Now, in Psalms 121, it says that God, uh, including the Lord Jesus, uh, never slumbers nor sleeps. Meaning that he is always on the job. He's always watching out for us. He's always providing for us. But in his flesh, he was weary. And in his flesh, he needed rest. In his flesh, he was asleep. The Lord Jesus in his flesh, when he was here as a man, he was hungry. He was thirsty. He was broken hearted. He was fatigued. He was weary. Uh, he, he felt the, the scourging, uh, the, the disfiguring. He experienced, it at, just as we would, the pain of the crucifixion. Uh, he was sorrowful, the Bible says. He, expen- he experienced sorrow. Uh, he, he experienced loss of a loved one. And he wept at the grave. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus was in the flesh. And it's important for us to understand his humanity. Because there are many times that people will say something like, Well, God just doesn't understand. But the truth is... He does understand. Even if you've been forsaken, abandoned, uh, He knows. He knows how you feel because that happened to Him. He, He even was separated from His Father because of our sins that were upon Him. Because He became sin. He was abandoned by His disciples in His, in His darkest hour. And so don't think... Even though in your flesh, you, you, may, you may experience a thoughts and, and feelings that aren't real, that, that are real to you, but they aren't true. The, the Lord Jesus does know how you feel. And that's one of the reasons he was here, is, is to experience life as we experience it, and to know how you feel so that, We can come boldly to him. In Hebrews 4, it says in verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, and it's Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling or the experience of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin." And so because he has experienced our lives, because he understands us, then we can come boldly to him. We don't have to back away. We don't have to be afraid. But we can go boldly to the Lord Jesus with all of our needs and our feelings and everything. And he understands. And so it's important that we know the humanity of the Lord Jesus but it's also important that we know the deity of Jesus in his in his humanity in this passage it says that he was asleep in the back of the boat because he was weary but then in his deity after they woke him up he said to the wind And to the sea, peace, be still. He rebuked the storm. And it was quiet. And it was still. And the disciples said in verse 41, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The manner of man is this, he created the wind and the sea and they are submissive to him because he is the creator and sustainer of all things the world the universe the earth is submissive to the lord jesus and so they see as we see his deity the lord jesus In his humanity, we see in this story, we see both of these together. His humanity, 
of God in the flesh and then his deity of God in control of his creation. Now, it's important for us to know this because we as he, he is our Savior, He is our Lord. And so it's important for us to know that because of His humanity, Jesus understands us. And because of His deity, He can take care of whatever's going on in our lives. Amen? Amen. So you, you, you can know whatever storm you're going through, He understands. Whatever storm you're going through, He's in control and can take care of it. And so we, we see Jesus. We get this, this look of, of Jesus. And, and we know in his deity he is God. He's in control. He should have the preeminence in all things. And then there's a picture of us. This is us. Now, first of all, we have a picture, actually, of our salvation here. You realize that? We have a picture of our salvation in that. Here is, here is the picture of salvation. Is that we trust Christ as Savior. We're following Him. We express our faith in Him. We believe He died for us. He rose again. He's the one and only Savior. We express our faith in Him, and then we get in the boat with Him. We, we, our journey in life is with Him. Because we're with Him, He's with us. He never, ever leaves us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The, the Lord Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is with us Every moment, whatever you're going through, wherever you are, He is with us every single moment. You need to know that, and you need to grasp it. You need to understand it. He is always with us. And so then, th 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 this is our salvation, that we are trusting Him. We get in the boat with Him and we're going to the other side. That's our salvation, right? Very simply put, that's the picture of our salvation. We're following Jesus. We're trusting Him. Uh, and we're, uh, we're, we're getting in the, the boat. We're, we're walking in the yoke with Him, if you're looking at Matthew 11. Or we're getting in the boat with Him. But whatever the, the, the illustration is, we're with Jesus. He's with us for the rest of our lives. And He has not abandoned you. He has not looked away. Uh, this picture of Him being asleep uh, in the boat does not mean that He's asleep on the job. He's talking about His weariness from the crowds and dealing with Him. He's talking about His humanity. It's talking about God in the flesh. It's not talking about that Jesus is asleep and doesn't know what's going on in your lives. He was asleep because he was weary and because he had no concerns about going out in the middle of the sea and sinking and perishing because he already knew they were going to the other side. And so this is a great picture of our salvation. That we're trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. We're living life with Him. And we're going to the other side. And then, of course, we have this picture of us. And that, are, that is that there are storms in our journey. Sooner or later, we're all, we go, all going through a storm of some kind. Some of you are going through one right now. It might be with your health. It might be with a loss. It might be with your job. It might be in a relationship. But there's something going on even in your life right now. 
Perhaps some of you have just gotten through a storm. And you know, and you could testify today, how the Lord was faithful even during your storm. And then some of you are preparing to go through one. We don't know what it is, how it will come, what it will be. But I hope you will learn that whatever it is and whenever it comes, the Lord Jesus will be with you. And, and he will take you through the storm to the other side, which, of course, is heaven. And so here's some of the things that we experience and and, and this is some of the things that we, we ask ourselves or we, we may just think these things or we might even ask other people about them. But the fact is, the storms in our lives, uh, they're a test of faith. They're a test of faith. Jesus said to, to them, he said, why are you so fearful? Why are you afraid? How is it you have no faith? Why didn't they listen to him? There's so many times that Jesus would tell them things and it wouldn't sink in. The biggest thing, of course, was how many times did he say to them, I'm going to be killed and then I'll rise again the third day. But they didn't hear it and or they didn't believe it because when he died, it was over for them. It was over. They were finished. They would given up. Everything they hoped for was gone. Jesus was not what they thought. It was not going to work out the way they thought it would. They didn't listen. Or they didn't believe that he would rise again. We might sort of be like that ourselves right now in that the, G, uh, the Lord Jesus is coming back. But you may be sort of believe that, uh, I don't know that's true. I mean, he hasn't come back yet. We've been saying forever he's coming back. You might find yourself like those disciples, if you're not careful. Because he is coming back. Just like he said he would rise again, he's going to come back. And boy, it sure looks like it right now. If I was unsaved today, i got to tell you, I would be scared to death. When you see our world, the crazy things in our world, we'll talk about some of these things tonight. I see all these things that's going on. If I didn't have assurance of heaven, if I didn't know the Lord Jesus was in control of my life, it would scare me to death as to what in the world is going to happen to me. If I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. I'm so thankful for the grace of God, for the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and that I am riding in the boat with him Whatever storms come along, I'm with him. Wherever he's going, I'm going. Amen. Amen. And so, th th this is a test of our faith. And, and you don't know how strong your faith is until it's tested. And the Bible calls it in James that it is precious. The trying of your faith is precious to the Lord. Because he wants, he, he's checking your faith. He's testing your faith. How strong is your faith? How much do you really believe? I mean, the disciples professed that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And yet, here they're tested, and, and they're falling apart. They're afraid for their lives. And Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Is God, sometimes we ask our questions, is God still good? Now, God is good when our health is good. No question about that. God is good 
when work is going well? No question. God is good when our relationships are good. No question about that. God is good when things are good. Amen? Amen. But do you ever question God and His goodness when things aren't so good? God is always good. But there are times when the devil will get in our heads and say, why did he allow this to happen? Why do good things happen? Or why do bad things happen to good people? Why? We always say that. We even say it like we're good, don't we? But the Bible says there's none good. We don't always turn that around to say, why do good things happen to bad people? I'm a bad person. I've sinned against God. I've rebelled against God. I've done so, many, so much wrong. But he still loves me. And he's still done good things to me. And good things for me. God is good all the time. Whether things look good to you or not, whether they feel good to you or not, God is good. Always know God is great and God is good. Always know those things, no matter how they may look or feel. You may ask this question like his disciples. Now, these are what we would say at that time, the best of the best, right? Right? Now, they were a hardcore group. They really were. But they would be the best of the best. I mean, they've given up their lives to follow him, right? They left their, they, they left their business. They left their livelihood. They left their families. I mean, they, they left everything. They're following Jesus. So they're, they got to be the best of the best. And they say, Master... Don't you care about us? Have you ever felt that? Be honest with yourself. Have you ever felt that God does not care? I think we've probably all felt that before. Going through something in our lives that maybe, maybe God really does not care. But He does care. And he rebuked, he, he rebuked the sea, right? He rebuked the wind, right? He also rebuked the disciples. He said, why are you afraid? Don't you have any faith? He rebuked them. And so does he care? Yes. Is he in control? Yes. Is he capable? Yes. Are his promises true? Yes. So keep your focus on the other side. Keep your focus on the other side and trust him. Look at these verses in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, in verse 1, it says, If then, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Don't love the world and the things that are in the world. Don't love the flesh. Love the Lord Jesus and keep your focus on the other side. Listen, this is not our home. We're, we're here on a mission. We're here on a journey. The amb- we are ambassadors for Christ. He has sent us here to serve Him, to represent Him. 
He sent us here uh, as his representatives, as his ambassadors. This is not our home. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 it says, in verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, eternal. Keep your focus on the other side. He will get you there. Listen, you, you, you're not, when you get, when you get saved... You're not holding on and holding out to try to get to heaven. He is holding on to you. You're not holding on to him. You're in his hands. And his hands are in the Father's hands. And you've been saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus. You've been born again into God's family. And he will take you to heaven. He will take you through all the storms of life and he will get you to heaven. You can trust him. You can know, be confident in any situation. You are his and he is going to take care of you and get you home. Keep your focus on the other side. I mean, whatever happens in this, whatever happens in this world, we're already as good as in heaven. We're just waiting for his call. Whether he calls us home one at a time, whether he calls us home to, all together, we, we are as good as there. Just waiting for our call. There's a song. Then the Kingsman um, Sing some kind of song like waiting for our ride. That's what we're doing. We're just waiting for our ride. We're going home to be with Jesus. Amen. And so let me say this. If you know Christ as Savior, he will get you there. If you don't, let me tell you this. You can't get there without him. You cannot get there without him. The disciples would have perished and, and been lost forever had they not been with Jesus. The, the, the only way, now there are so many things in our world, that's, that's one of the signs of the last times. There, there's so many false, there's so many false Christs, false prophets, false religions, false faiths. All of these things are so deceitful, and so many of them sound good, sound wonderful, but they're not true. There's one way. I, I, I'm telling you the truth this morning because I love you, and it's my duty to tell you the truth, and the truth is this. There's one way to heaven. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. However good things may sound and however right they may seem, they're not right. There's one Savior, one way to heaven. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and, and you can't get to heaven except through Jesus. The good thing is, though, He loves you. Whoever you are, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, God loves you. And the Lord Jesus died for your sins. Every one of you. Every one of us. And he wants to save us. And if you simply, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart, believe what in your heart? Believe you've sinned against God. Believe you need help. You need a Savior. Believe that Jesus died for you. Believe he rose again for you. Believe he's the one and only Savior. The Bible says if you believe that in your heart, and then confess it with your mouth, you'll be saved. And so you just come to Jesus, believing, trusting, asking Him to forgive you and save you, and He will. And you'll be born again into God's family. And those of us who are 
are saved, realize this, you're going through life with Jesus. Storms will come. He will not abandon you. He'll provide everything you need. He'll help you through it. And one day, he will take us home. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Father, for his death, burial, and resurrection. We're thankful for the good news of salvation through Jesus. Father, we're thankful that he gets us through storms. That whatever goes on, he will get us through these things. I pray, Father, that we'll trust him. That we'll not panic. Uh, we'll not worry. But we'll just trust Jesus. And have total, complete confidence in him. And Father, if there's one here today or watching our program that is not saved, we pray that at this moment, they would give their lives to Jesus. They'd confess their sins. They would trust Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Father, right now we pray that salvation would come and that our trust in Him would grow and grow and be stronger as we trust Him through life. Please, Lord, let your will be done. Help us all to be obedient, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand quietly and reverently as we have our invitation. Now listen, if you're not saved, you don't know Christ as Savior, you come. Just come.